I look good today. I didn't even shower. Hey, it's time for Explosion Wednesday. It's a new thing I'm trying out. You may have heard about something that has exploded in the news lately. Bitcoin. Bitcoin. I don't give a shirt. Coin. So we're gonna talk about Bitcoin. What the fuck? It's Bitcoin Weezy Waddle. It's a cryptocurrency. Cryptocurrency? A currency that has risen from the dead? Spooky. No, a purely digital form of money. Oh, cha-ching. It's digital, it doesn't make that sound. Oh, beep boop. That's better. In the beginning, back in 2009 or 10 or so, a Bitcoin was worth less than a dollar. Currently, it's worth, at the time of this sentence, $16,685. Beep boop. So back in 2009, if someone bought a hundred Bitcoin right now, they would have the quality of being a millionaire for now. Some say, like when I eat too much hummus, it created a bubble that could burst at any moment. But is it a bubble? They probably say it's a bubble because Bitcoin isn't based on any tangible product or business like a stock, but it's just rampant speculation like a stock a lot of the time. But what is Bitcoin? It's a cryptocurrency. But like what is it? Hang on, let me do a little reading. Okay, I'm back. What might make cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin actually valuable is their decentralized nature. They're not ruled by any one monolithic central bank or government, and they can cross borders with ease, wandering the globe. Like Kane from Kung Fu? Yes, like Kane from Kung Fu. But wait, kind sir, you might ask. I'm not asking. But you might. I'm not. But you might ask, wouldn't an unregulated digital currency with no physical backing just be chaos? Okay, I might ask that. Well, the way Bitcoin maintains its credibility is through a thing called blockchain. Like came from Kung Fu? Not that kind of chain. But that is badass. Oh, yeah. With paper money, you can't use the same money twice because you are literally handing it over to someone else. Unless, like me, you tie a string to it and you pull it back. But not everyone can be as fiscally responsible as me. And if you use credit or debit, like everybody, then your money is regulated by Daddy Warbucks or the bank. I know Daddy Warbucks isn't a bank owner. He just looks like a bank owner, you know what I mean? Get off my back, Annie fanboys. The sun will come out tomorrow. You bet your bottom Bitcoin. But if you want to drink the Bitcoin Kool-Aid and decentralize your money, enter the blockchain. Oh yeah! Kool-Aid, if you do that commercial again, may I be the voice? You can pay me in Bitcoin. The best analogy I've come across to describe blockchain is Google Docs. Imagine you're writing up a contract with multiple people using Word files and you're emailing back and forth. Ooh, I changed line 24. Ooh. Line 54 to 140. I changed the font to Arial Black. I think it looks nicer. Okay, I signed it. Me too. Wait, I'm not done. I'm not done. You end up creating multiple different versions living on multiple computers. It can lead to confusion or worse, corruption or even worse. Comic Sans. But with Google Docs, it's just one document that everyone works on at the same time, and any change is a change for everybody, and your one friend who wants Comic Sans will never win the day, because no group has more than one person who likes Comic Sans. And blockchain is similar. It's one unchanging record of every transaction ever made that lives on multiple computers on a giant network. Cha cha chain chain of transactional data. In theory, no one person or entity would have enough computing power to take over and change the record. And when they're originally made, they can't be corrupted because they're not verified by a person, but by algorithms. Ah, I love algorithms. That reminds me, check out my video yesterday. It's called Fudge. Algorithms. So there you have it. It's the dream. A robust, decentralized, corruption-proof currency. And the proof is in the pudding. What the fudge does that mean? Bitcoin really began to take off when a couple early adopter industries started using it. The illegal drug trade and ransom payments. Since then, it has been used for other less sketchy reasons, like Argentinians and Venezuelans adopted it to avoid their country's high inflation. And now many people do use it for legitimate transactions online all the time. And theoretically, isn't it nice to imagine a world where no one entity controls our money and all transactions live on a permanent record which is nearly impossible to manipulate, which would make corruption unlikely. That would be a nice world, and someday we might achieve that. But Bitcoin has been hacked before, and probably will be again. And the huge amount of electricity it takes for the network and Bitcoin mining, which is a whole other story that I don't want to get into right now, seems likely to become unsustainable as Bitcoin keeps growing, and it also gives advantage to countries with cheaper electricity. But there's lots of other cryptocurrencies that are working to improve these problems, and so is Bitcoin. But Bitcoin's so huge now that it's hard to make changes. There you have it. Answered all your questions. Is Bitcoin a bubble? Well, it does seem like there's actual value in cryptocurrency, but right now it seems like most people are just putting money in to take money out and be rich later. So is it a bubble? Well, people put money in regular businesses like Apple just to take money out and get rich, and Apple's still a business. So is it a bubble? Dude, I don't know, leave me alone. Thank you for watching. Yesterday's video is an angry rant about YouTube's disturbing kid content and their algorithm problems. The algorithm gods think you'll like that video. If you think I'm not a bubble and there's legitimate value in me, consider supporting me on Patreon. And thank you to all of you who already do support me. I really can't do this without you. Stay Bitcoin, pony boy.